Okay, this video is to help you with a problem that some of you might be having with uh, the dates in entering data in your project. So I presented a spreadsheet like this to help you enter some values quickly. And if you have dates and times, you might run into something like this. So here is the date column. I call it some date and the some time column. And when you create the insert statements using the Excel formula, you might see very strange numbers. Instead of the date you're seeing here, 2016-1101, you see a number 4675. And for the times, you see some other number. So what's going on is that Excel has its own internal way to store dates and times. And it's smart enough that it recognizes these numbers as dates and as times, and it converts it to its internal format. Then when you apply your uh, insert statement script here, Excel just spits it out using its internal format, which is not what is intended. So the solution to this is, well, if you were able to figure to prevent this before it happened, you need to tell Excel that these columns should not be interpreted as dates or times, just read them as plain text. And the way to do that is you click on the column, and in Excel, in this little box here, you specify what the type is. And what you want to choose is text. You don't want to choose general, certainly not any date. You'd want to tell Excel, just understand that as plain text. And for this column, you want to tell Excel, just understand it as plain text also, not as a time. Now here, because I'd already entered those before I made these changes, it's a little bit too late. So if you're, that's your situation, well, I'll just undo these two changes here. So what you can do is you copy the entire columns. You select them and you copy the entire columns and you just open up uh, a document. You open up a plain text content like Notepad++ or Notepad and you paste that. So you paste what you had there. Then you come back to Excel and then you make the changes. So some dates make it, well actually you want both of them to be plain text, just text. And now you go back to what you had copied and just select all, control A. You copy it and then you go back and in the top left corner, just where some data is written, you just click on that and then you paste there. So right click, don't paste special, just a regular paste. And then it now pastes it as plain text and it will be recognized as text. And so now you see it, it, the SQL script interprets it just as expected. So that fixes that first problem. So here I've opened up uh, Oracle and I have a test table, which represents the table I have here. You can see it's very simple. Just open it up and just has a few columns. There's nothing in it right now. So it has the columns necessary to put in this sample data. So now, normally you should be able to just copy and insert scripts right from here and then paste it directly into Oracle. Okay, so I just copied this here and paste it into Oracle and I'll try to run it. So I try to run that insert script and there I have an error message. Literal does not match format string. So it might be a different kind of format, a uh, different kind of error that you get, but ultimately this is a date type issue. So I need an alter session statement to match what I have here as my date type. Okay, so pretty straightforward, or so it seems. So here I have, I clear out this error. Here I enter an alter session statement with a date format, year, year, month, month, DD. 
and I run that. So the session is altered, that's good. Then now I come back and try to run the insert script again. And now I get a different error. Uh, here it says not a valid month. And it might be some other error, but it's important to know what's going on here. The problem is that the first one is fine. The alter, station, the alter session statement tells you what it is, no problem. But the other one, the time here, remember in Oracle, all you have for dates and times is a date type. And so any alter date format applies to both dates and times. And Oracle does not understand this here as a valid date time. And so you run into a problem because the dates are formatted in one way, the times are formatted in another way, and so that really uh, presents a problem. Okay, so the way to resolve this second part of the problem when you come into Oracle is you need to set Oracle to recognize both dates and times in a standard format. And so you could use an expanded alter session statements like this one here. So you see here you're specifying the date format and the time format together at the same time. So clear out this error and now I will run this expanded alter session statement. This, the session is altered. Uh, however, this doesn't totally fix a problem. See when you try to run it you still get an error message because now here it expects any date and time to have both a date component and a time component, which is not the case here. So the way to resolve this is you need to use two date statements in your insert statement. And that is you need to tell Oracle how to correctly interpret these dates and times that you've given it. So let's copy this down here and what we're essentially doing is for this date part, we just add a two date statement. So we're, oh, two date function. So we're saying to date, change this state and it needs to be understood as a DD, MM, Y. Well, actually, sorry, that's not the right format. Y, 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 MM, DD. So that's how it's understood as a to date. And the next part, the time part, also uses a to date function. And you're telling Oracle, it needs to understand that as, and the correct format for this is HH24MISS. And once you enter that, okay, so let's clear the error. So you're basically telling Oracle, you need to understand this part as a date in this format, and you need to understand this part as a time in this format. Completed uh, this statement, and now let's try to run it. And it says one row inserted. So let's look at our table. When we look at our table, we refresh. You now see that it shows the some date and some time in the format that you want it. So ultimately it now can read the statements correctly. So what we need to do next is we need to add this these two date functions to our Excel script. So here's the Excel script that is showing the unmodified part. Then I've gone ahead and you basically need to fiddle with this Excel script and I've prepared one that does so, that adds the two date functions directly in there, just in the format you want, and reads uh, the, the values that you want there. And so if we copy those, so you can copy all of those values, and now you put all of them here into Oracle, and let's run all the extra ones. And there it inserted all the statements validly. And when we look at the table, refresh, all the amounts are there. And you can see the dates increment according to the format you asked, and the times are different according to what you want. For the dates part, 
when all you want is a date and you enter it, it will always default to midnight. And for the time part, when all you have are uh, times and you care about, then Oracle uses different rules to automatically pick a date, but we're going to ignore the date. So now our last challenge is that we would like to actually display what the contents of this. So let me clear the script output. So for example, you want to select star from test table. But usually we don't want it to show everything in the date and everything in the time. So the way to fix that is use a to care statement. So for example, if what we want is want to select the description, some date, some time from test table. Again, it shows it's not in the format you want. So we just have to use to modify these statements using the to care function. So you specify to care some date and you're telling Oracle not to change the internal format, but when it displays in this particular report, you're telling Oracle, okay, you want it to display in the format that you want. So it's for the to date, just display nothing but the date. So just show the characters, not the date. And then for the time, the sum time that you want here, well, just display nothing but the time part that you want. And so when you run this as a query, now you're getting what you want. Now you have you're displaying just the date part that you want, just the time part that you want. And because the default titles are kind of ugly, you probably want to use an alias. So you can just say that's as the date. And you can make the time as time. And now you finally get what you want. So we've gone all the way from starting with Excel, which is easy to enter the tables in, but might mess up your date formats. Then we've gone through how to fix those date formats by changing Excel columns, but that doesn't work directly in Oracle. So you have to enter the two date statements to tell Oracle how to interpret the dates. And then finally, you, you can use whatever default. It's good to use an alter session statement that shows both dates and times. But when you want to actually print them out, you want to use a to care statement to show just the date or the time according to what you want.